Recessions are sad enough when they can't be avoided, but purposely created, creating them uh, because of poor economic theory or practice is an entirely new level of unacceptable. Uh, of course, uh, that's the view of yours truly. We want to bring in the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. All right, so, you know, the Fed has been deliberately engineering, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a economic crisis or a crash or whatever you want to call it, recession. And I believe uh, that they've been ham-fisted about it, and I think you do too as well. So where, where do they stand now, uh, David? Well, look, the, their policy is one that if they create a boom, it isn't their fault. And if they create a bust to deal with the boom, it's the, what they have to do. And I would prefer they not create bust because I would prefer they not create booms. And so we are stuck in a cycle that's been going on a long time. Mm. This did not start with Jay Powell. We've had a series, going back to Greenspan, of uh, Fed heads who believe in a boom-bust cycle. But then right now, there's even people on the right that are talking as if the cure for inflation is destroying jobs, that growth is somehow the enemy of sound money. It is not true. The production of goods and services is an antidote to inflation, not the cause of inflation. And you cannot produce goods and services without more people working. Right. And for those who want a market mechanism to set the cost of capital, the idea that people think the market would be raising rates tomorrow is comical. The inflation rate has come down substantially. If they didn't have the lag effect of shelter, the reality is we're running at about two to two and a half percent annualized inflation. And now you have this banking issue where nobody, right. nobody right. would be tightening monetary policy right now. It's, it's totally unfortunate what we're experiencing. Real quick then on that notion, uh, and I agree with you, the maestro, right, the Greenspan, uh, you know, he was, uh, Wall Street made him royalty because of his quick actions in 87, and that began this, uh, this thing. Have we crossed the Rubicon? Is there, will there ever be a Fed, pre, uh, chair of the Fed that can actually say, I'm going to skip the boom part of this so we never have to get to the bus part of it? Well, there could be, but it isn't about the Fed. That can't happen unless you have a Congress that does its job. That can't happen unless you have a people, a citizenry in the country right. that doesn't want Keynesian uh, uh, solutions to every problem. And right now we spend above our means. The people want to spend above their means. They don't get mad when Republicans do it. They don't get mad when Democrats do it. So therefore, the Fed no longer has to be the lender of last resort. They have to be the spender of last mm -hmm. resort. And that is caused by a people that want a government too large. Real quick, uh, I got a minute to go. I want to ask you about uh, the FDIC. A lot of rumblings that maybe we should get rid of the limit at all, right? Just so folks understand, in 1934, they started at a 2,500. Adjusted for inflation, it would be 57,000 right now. Instead, we got 250,000. What about the, the notion then uh, of eliminating the whole thing? The U.S. government covers all accounts. That would maybe theoretically stop a run in the banks. They would never need, you would never have to run to your bank because you know your money's covered. But what if they ever truly had to cover it? See, the problem with that would be if they leave it implicit. If they're going to explicitly say all depositors are covered, it wouldn't be the federal government um, paying for it. It would be the banking system paying for it. So people could say, oh, great, depositors have unlimited coverage. But then the problem is that there would be higher bank fees. There would be a higher expense in how that gets done. The worst thing they can do is what I think they're going to do, which is leave the limit where it is, but really wink and nod that don't worry if anyone gets in trouble will just have to suspend it because of systemic conditions. Mm. And I think that I would rather they make it explicit than leave it implicit. But the idea of them not doing it at all, well, you and I both know, Charles, <laughs> that's not going to happen. All right. Hey, David, fantastic conversation. Always appreciate you. Thank you so much, particularly today.